Hi, I'm Maggie. Thank you for stopping by Crafts the Charm today. You are most welcome here. And today is going to be our third ornament in the Big Thunder Mountain Railroad inspired Christmas tree. If you haven't seen the other videos, I'll put links in the description below. So today's ornament is going to be based on the little mining town of Rainbow Ridge. Let's go have some fun. The Big Thunder Mountain train in Disneyland in California has a little area which is called Rainbow Ridge. It's the mining town that's associated with Big Thunder Mountain. So what I decided to do was make a building from that little mining town. And again, I've never been on that ride, but looking at pictures, I chose the Big Thunder Saloon. And I like this building. It's got a sort of rectangular facade and then it has a little building behind it, which looks like it's a sort of a log cabin. So to start, I just opened up Photoshop and planned out the facade. I knew that it would be easier if I had a template for cutting out the windows and the door, and also if I had a sort of a template for the lettering as well, because I knew that I would not be able to freehand the words on the front of the saloon. So the materials that I'm going to use to make this, besides, of course, paint and glue, are from the Dollar Tree, one of their little bird houses, and then some wood planks. Now, these are the wood planks that are rectangular. There are six pieces in the package, and they are 7.1 by 2.8 inches. Some bamboo skewers, and small and large craft sticks. Now, in the end, I did also end up using two tumbling tower blocks, but you could you could get around that with additional craft sticks if you wanted to. You don't have to include those. Now the first thing I did was I cut off the front of the roof on the birdhouse and I have lost the footage of that, but I just used a little saw. I have a saw and miter box, which I will link in the description because it's been a very, very useful tool for this project and for other projects. So I did cut off the front of the roof, which overhangs in the front and the back, so that I could fit the facade flat up against the front. So I did also, of course, cut off the little perch on the birdhouse. And then I just cut off as much of the front of this birdhouse as I could without weakening it, because I do want light to be able to shine through the front of the facade. It wasn't easy for me to cut through. I wasn't going to try to use any sort of power tools in this project because I was afraid that power tools would rip through this wood. So I am using a box cutter knife and the little saw for all of the cutting that I'm doing on this project. So with the little birdhouse flattened off and opened up, I then turned to the plank and I held it up against the birdhouse to decide about how high I wanted it to be using a photo of the saloon um, from Disneyland. And I decided that I wanted it to be about five inches tall. The Big Thunder Saloon at Rainbow Ridge has some trim across the top of the building. And at first I didn't think that would be very easy to reproduce. Then I realized if I took a large popsicle stick or craft stick and a small one and a bamboo skewer that I could put them together and create something that looks sort of like a crown molding. So what I did was I glued those together first and then once they're one solid piece then I will cut them. So you can see I glued them with a small piece not exactly lined up at the bottom with the larger piece and then the bamboo skewer on top of the small piece again leaving a little bit of space um, on the larger craft stick at the bottom. So you can just put it together in whatever way looks like a nice crown molding to you. That was the configuration that I thought looked pretty good. So I had printed out four copies of my plan for this just because I wasn't sure how I would be using them and I figured I would probably need more than one. And so what I did first was I just cut out the door and windows so that I had a template for cutting out of this piece of wood and I just marked that on the piece of wood. And what I realized was this was going to be a lot easier if I cut it from the bottom. Now, if you don't want to cut it from the bottom, then you can drill a hole in this wood and that will give you a starting place for cutting out the door and the window. So I would drill that hole right in the middle of the windows and, and the long part. And then you could cut from there, just like I did with the birdhouse. Um, and the reason that it doesn't go all the way to the bottom um, in the actual building, 
there's a sort of a little porch on the outside. I thought I would just put a step there. And if I'm going to put a step there, it's really okay if I cut all the way to the bottom and then just put the step in front of it. So you won't really be able to tell that you'd actually fall on your face if you tried to walk through the door because there's no floor there. So um, I, I am going to draw the lines all the way to the bottom and cut um, all the way to the bottom of this piece of wood and, and that just makes it easier. This again, like the, the birdhouse, this is not easy to cut and I want this to be as neat as possible because this is the front of the building. Once I could use the knife to open up enough space for the saw to fit, it was much easier to cut because the saw works pretty well. But it was a challenge to get myself to that point. It went much quicker once I was able to cut with the saw. So to cut the trim for the top, I thought that I would have it wrap around the building, even though the building, or the facade rather, even though the facade is not very deep, I just thought it would look nicer if it wrapped around. So I did want to miter those edges. Now the little miter box, it has a 45 degree angle that you can cut at. It has a you know straight up and down 90 degree angle, and then I'm going to call the other angle a 135 degree angle. or And for reference, that 45 degree angle, I guess that's like a forward slash, and the 135 degree angle, I guess that's like a backslash, although I always get forward slash and backslash confused, but I, I think I have those right. So um, what you're going to do on the front piece of the facade, on the left side, miter it using the 45 degree cut and on the right side miter it using the 135 degree cut and make sure that the inside is the length of the building otherwise you might cut it too short so the the actual outside of the, the wood the outside of the miters is going to be larger than the size of the front right? they're going to poke out a little bit and that's where they're going to meet the other pieces of wood when you cut the two little end pieces on the left side the left the left side piece, the left side of the left side piece is going to be straight. For the right side, you're going to miter it with the 135 degree angle. And on the little piece on the right side, the right of that piece is going to be straight. And on the left, miter it with the 45 degree cut. And then the little mitered pieces will fit together nicely against the miters on the front. I'm only explaining all that because I can be spatially a little clueless and so it helps me to say it all out and maybe it will help you not to make any mitering mistakes if you decide to make a little piece like this um, for the top of your little building. Of course you could do straight cuts if you're more comfortable with that. I just like the way the mitered cuts look. Now then the door and windows need trim of course and I didn't have any pieces of wood that were really thin enough for me to make trim, so I decided that I would use the bamboo skewer. I thought that they looked okay in the end, so I just cut lengths of those, and here I did not miter, although I think it would look better if you mitered. I had enough trouble just doing it straight, um, so I just cut pieces for the sides of the windows and pieces that went all the way up from the bottom, not the very bottom of the piece of wood, but the bottom where the step is going to be, so up from the bottom to the top of the windows. So that frames the door. And then I framed the windows between the door frame and the window frame on the side. And then I framed across the top. So when you're doing this, you only need to decide which pieces are going to be sort of on the outside. And if you just cut them one piece at a time and glue them on, um, then you should be just fine. Because the inside is not um, exactly square, because it was a challenge to cut, um, you re I really needed to measure each piece against the little building front and cut them each individually to get them to be the right size. And then once I had all the pieces cut, I laid them out on a piece of painter's tape to hold them in place until I can glue them to the piece of wood. And before I glue them, I want to sand the wood. It has a few rough spots from when I cut it. So I started with a 60 grit and then I went to a 120 grit. I just want it to be smoothed out enough that nobody gets hurt. After I wiped all of the sawdust off, I then glued everything together using Gorilla Wood Glue. You could certainly use hot glue for this or possibly some other glue like E6000 or super glue, I don't know. I used wood glue because it's wood, but the disadvantage to wood glue is it does take a little bit of time to dry, so I did hold it together with painter's tape while it was drying. Now with that all glued together, what I decided to do was Mod Podge the words, the Big Thunder Saloon, 
onto the top of the building between the windows and the molding at the top. Now I printed this in reverse because I'm going to Mod Podge transfer it, not Mod Podge it straight down. So I'm just going to use it again as a sort of a template so that I can paint over because I know I can't freehand paint this neatly. So I'm just going to use regular map Mod Podge and Mod Podge it upside down which should reverse the letters back to being readable. And um, I'm not going to wait for that to dry like 24 hours because again it, I'm not really trying to make a nice transfer, in fact I'm going to paint over it. So I just need it there so I can see the letters. I also used a little spackle and I filled in the little corners between the trim around the door and the windows and um, I think I did a pretty good job with the miters at the top but I also used a little spackle there as well. Now I plan to put wax paper behind the windows and the door as a sort of glazing I guess but mostly just to hide the birdhouse and I also need to have some little swinging doors and I thought the tops of those large popsicle sticks they're not exactly the same shape as the swinging doors on the Big Thunder Saloon at Rainbow Ridge but I thought they were close enough so I just measured those to a size that seemed about right to me and cut them down and I had to cut them widthwise as well because they were a little too wide and they were going to show through the windows so I wanted to cut them so that they would just meet in the middle and not show through the windows. And now I do want to be able to insert a tree light in the back of this to shine and make the saloon look very warm and welcoming. So I'm going to use a half inch bit here and I'm going to drill a hole in the back and that will be plenty big for inserting a small Christmas light. Now for the step in front of the door, what you have to account for here is there's a little ledge on the bottom of the birdhouse. And so what I want to do is to put a little step there that will sit on the ledge and it needs to be below the trim for the door. Now, I, worst case scenario, if the, you didn't account for the ledge, you could always just cut the ledge off. But what I found was exactly the right size was one of the larger craft sticks and then a Tumlin power block, which is this uh, Jenga toy from the Dollar Tree, was the perfect size. I it needed one plus a little bit of the Tumlin tower block. So what I did was I cut two um, so that the seam would be down the middle. I just thought that would be neater than having the seam off to a side and using one whole block and a piece of another block. And now to paint with this one, I was going to try to make it look sort of like the Big Thunder Saloon at Rainbow Ridge, which has a sort of a yellowish color on the facade. And again, it's like a log cabin in the back, as far as I can tell. And I'm not too sure about the roof. I think it's brown. I'm gonna say wood shingled, I don't know. So what I have here is my Deco Art Burnt Umber, which is a brown. I have a Dollar Tree brown paint, which has a little bit of a reddish color to it. And I have a black acrylic paint, um, Apple Barrel black acrylic paint. I also have a white paint, which I've got a tiny bit of Dollar Tree yellow mixed into, which I call my sheepskin knockoff paint. Now I start by painting everything except for the facade with the Burnt Umber brown. I then used the black acrylic paint and I used a toothpick to give some features. So the, the separations between the logs for the log cabin and then the shingles and then the boards on the little step in front. I did switch from a toothpick to a fine paintbrush because I got frustrated with the toothpick, but the toothpick will definitely give you thinner lines. It's just you have to dip it in the paint an awful lot. I then added just sort of aging and um, not holes, dirt, other features with the black paint. I then mixed up a gray wash with the white sheepskin and some black and some water and I washed that over the steps and over the bottom of sort of the platform of the birdhouse and wiped it off. And then I used that to add some features sort of like where light would have made the wood look lighter, like light hitting it, I mean, um, to the roof and to the logs. Now for the facade where I had Mod Podged on the words as a guide for myself, you use cool water when you remove the paper of a transfer with Mod Podge, so I used cool water to get the paper off of that. And then I tried to mix up a sort of a yellowish brown base color using my sheepskin white, a little bit more yellow, and some brown. I painted this over the front of the facade. And of course, because you will see some of the back of the facade, I painted the back and the sides as well. I then added more brown and sort of dragged some of the brown paint through that with a smaller paintbrush 
just to give it a little bit of aging and make it a little more interesting. Now I painted over the lettering with a fine paintbrush and some black paint, and my original thought was that this would be the shadow of letters that would be painted in a sort of red, but I wasn't able to successfully paint over this, so I just left these letters as black. A more talented artist could probably do better with this, but I really had to sort of leave mine alone and say that's the best I can do right now, and that's what it looks like. Now for the trim, I mixed up a sort of a reddish brown, and I painted all of the trim and the little doors with this color. Well, really it's just the slats for the little doors. And then I mixed up a sort of a watery, more orangish color, and I washed that over the doors and over the facade, because um, I really wasn't that thrilled with the color of the facade. Now for the little sign, I had given it a sort of a shadow with the black, and then I painted with my um, off-white, my sheepskin color for the sign itself, and I also added some highlights to the little doors with that, and then I also uh, painted over that with brown on the little doors. I had trouble getting those doors looking the way I wanted. Um, now I painted around the sign with the brown. And then I used a toothpick to try to paint in some lettering on that, and that looked really terrible. So I put everything down and I walked away from this project because sometimes you just have to walk away when something looks terrible and go, okay, I will fix that later. So what I did was I found a, another cool Western font and the fonts that I use are the free Google fonts. So I found another cool one and I printed out a sign and I cut a piece of craft stick to go over where I had painted the sign and I painted that brown and Mod Podged, or Mod Podged first, I think, and then painted brown around it as a, a edging and as the color of the wood. And then I just glued that over the badly painted sign and everything looked much better. Now I felt the house was just looking too bright, so I painted over that with just a brown wash, so just that burnt umber paint and water. I did the same with the little doors and I used some black too where I thought that that would help with the slats. Now I just glued everything together. So I glued the little doors onto the facade and then I glued the, it was several layers, four layers of wax paper behind the windows and the door of the facade. And then I glued the steps to the front of the facade and the facade to the birdhouse. Now it's almost done, but it needs a couple of little lanterns in the front. And the first thing that I tried, I'm not going to subject you to much of this, but I'll show you quickly what I tried because I think it had potential to work well, but it did not. So you know those little metal things on the end of pencils that erasers go in? I'll bet they have a name because everything has a name, but I don't know what it is. I thought that those would be cool for the top and the bottom of lanterns. So I cut them off of a couple of pencils where the erasers were completely worn down. But they're too big, they need to have a glass ball in the middle of them, so I needed to cut them into pieces. In fact, I cut them into three pieces because I cut the middle out because they were going to be too big. One of them was a very lightweight metal and it was easy to work with. And the other one was almost impossible for me to cut. So I think if you found a lightweight one, you might have better luck if you wanted to try this. What I really liked about them is, is that they're not just flat, they have markings on them. So I thought they looked really cool. So unfortunately, when I was working with them, they got crushed and I tried to make them round again. And then I also didn't have any clear beads, which I thought was the way to go here, but I had nothing like a clear bead. So what I tried to do was use hot glue as the clear bead, the glass ball in the lantern. And what I did was I filled them up with hot glue to because the erasers had come out. And then I put hot glue on top of one of them and this will form a ball, but it'll slowly squash itself. So what I did was I would quickly flip it upside down so that gravity would pull it down. But then when it looked like it was getting pulled down too far, I'd quickly flip it right side up. And I just kept doing that until I could see that the glue had hardened. And I got something that looked sort of like a ball, 
but it, it wasn't a nice big clear ball like you would prefer. And then I have the very thin black florist wire from the Dollar Tree, so that was pretty easy to wrap around. And I painted the pencil parts black, but really they did not look very good. I, I couldn't bring myself to adhere them in any way to my little building. So here you can see how bad they look. And then I tried something else, and here's the new one. And you can see that looks better. Um, so I am filming in another location here, so I am sorry for the quality of this. But I wanted you to see what I had done. I cut some pieces of black foam, just craft foam. And these are 3 quarters of an inch long by a quarter inch wide. And I just wound them up and glued them together, like a cinnamon roll, but not as delicious. And I went out and bought some glass beads, and I got those at Walmart, and they were 99 cents, and they were the perfect size. I actually brought the little bad lanterns with me to Walmart to see if I could find something. And I glued those between the little pieces of foam, and then, again, same thing with the black wire. I just wrapped it around so you get that little cage around the ball. I also wrapped it around the foam a little bit, too, which did make the foam a little bit more interesting. It gave it you know, a little bit of character. Now, I've made a lot of decorations for my tree over the year out of cardboard. I think cardboard is a really great material. So I'm going to make another one of these, and another Big Thunder saloon, but I'm going to make this one out of corrugated cardboard. So I have a cardboard box here, and I'm showing you the dimensions. So for the facade, I cut a piece that was 2 and 7 eighths inches wide, and I thought that my building was about 5 inches, but I measured it, it's closer to 4 and 3 quarters. So the facade, 4 and 3 quarters inches tall. The windows are two and a quarter inches down from the top of the facade, and they're a little less than one and a half inches tall. The house sides are one and five sixths inches at the bottom by two and a half inches tall. And the house back is two and one sixths inches wide. Now the part that's going to match up with the sides, of course, is two and a half inches tall, but from the bottom of it to the point of the roof is three and a half inches tall. And each roof piece is two and a quarter inches square. Remember that the roof pieces are going to overhang front, uh, not in the back, not in the front, and on the sides. Now, the way I put my roof pieces together, one of them is on top of the other. So if you want to do that, you want to make that one just a tiny bit longer or the other one just a tiny bit shorter to account for that width. And of course, cardboard is much easier to work with. I just cut all the pieces out with a box cutter knife or with scissors. And I was able to cut out the door, of course, much more easily. Now, the other thing that's great about corrugated cardboard is it's corrugated, and that looks a little bit like a log cabin. So I did peel off on the sides and the back of the building. I peeled off that top layer of paper over the corrugated part of the cardboard to give us that nice texture. And now, really feeling wimpy about the letters, I just printed out the, the words. I printed out just a whole rectangle and just glued that right to the top of this. I wasn't going to try to transfer it because I'm not going to get this piece of cardboard wet. So I just glued that right to the top and then cut out where the doors, uh, rather the door and the windows are. Now the cardboard isn't super strong even though it's corrugated cardboard, like particularly those little areas between the door and the windows. So I did firm this up with some wood. I trimmed the whole thing with wood. It, this is easy wood to cut, so I feel like this really does save you a lot. Well, especially if you don't have the little pieces of wood or the little birdhouse, then you would have to make it out of something else. So this saves you those pieces of wood and working with those pieces of wood, and all you need to work with are the bamboo skewers, and if you want to, the craft sticks for making the trim at the top. But you don't have to, you could make that out of cardboard too. I made, you can you can see it next to the building, I made the trim for the top out of wood. I, I happen to have made more than I needed, so I just cut it up and used it for the top of this building. And I used bamboo skewers to trim the front, and this made the front stronger. I also had an extra little piece of wood that I used for the sign for the front that goes under the Big Thunder Saloon sign. And that's it for wood. 
So the rest of it is cardboard for the steps. I just cut three pieces of cardboard that I'm going to glue together for the step in the front. Oh, and I did cut a piece for the bottom. That wasn't in my measurements, but I basically just stuck the box on top of cardboard and just guessed at what size I wanted that to be. And to put this one together, I used hot glue, which is much quicker and easier. But I don't glue the whole thing together until I've painted it, because the facade is painted differently from the building. Another difference with this one is because the sides of the cardboard don't look that good, I did put a little bit of the bamboo skewer trim down the sides of the facade. And with the windows, I did regret that I hadn't put any mullions in the windows, but I felt like this could really only handle one across. When I thought about putting another one in to divide it into four panes, it really looked silly. So I think they would have to be really quite tiny for it to look any good. But I thought putting one across was an improvement from having just open windows. And over little doors, they're also um, still the craft sticks, just like before. I thought I would paint this one in slightly different colors. So the building is still the burnt umber brown with sort of black accents and the steps, uh, or the step I painted basically the same. But the front I used my off-white and dragged some brown through it. And for the trim, I didn't put so much red in the trim. There's still, I think, a little bit of red, but it's mostly just a dark brown with a little bit of black and just a tiny bit of red. And I liked that color better. So I actually like the colors on this cardboard building better than the colors I used on the other one. And before I glued it all together, I did cut a little hole in the back so that I could put a light in the back of this building as well. And of course I did put the wax paper in it. I made little lights for this one as well, same as for the other one with the craft foam and the glass beads. And for both of them, I glued the little lights to the front beside the door at the top. Now you could Mod Podge this whole thing to seal it. I didn't Mod Podge mine, but I probably should, so I might go back in there and Mod Podge them just to cover up that paint to seal it in. And here is what they look like on the tree, which already has our little lanterns and our little goats. And with the lights on and shining through, aren't they inviting? Don't you want to go in? And uh, let's see for the dancing and the poker. <laughs> So what did you think of our little saloon buildings? This is the cardboard one, and I really like the way that it came out. Once I make one, it's always easier to make subsequent copies of whatever it is I've made. I think it would be really fun to make some of the other buildings in Rainbow Ridge, or some of the other buildings that are in the other Big Thunder rides at the different parks. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. That lets me know that this is the sort of content that you enjoy so that I can bring you more. And if you like this sort of content, please subscribe to Crafts the Charm. Thank you for spending time with me today. Take care.